So this marks my fifth or sixth custom loop build, uh, and all of them have been with PETG tubing. A few of you have asked for a tutorial of sorts. I think by this point I'm experienced enough to give you some pointers, especially for first-timers, because I did not have uh, the smoothest first-time experience bending PETG tubing. I should also note that acrylic, for the most part, will behave similarly. It's it's a bit easier in some instances, a bit more difficult, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, and some will swear by acrylic, some will swear by PETG. This right here is PETG tubing, uh, but both are excellent. Uh, choices for just bending and including in a custom loop like this. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. I'm going to show you the tools that you'll need uh, and some of the shortcuts and tricks that I do to make the bends look smooth like these in here. So the first thing you're going to need, obviously, is either PETG or acrylic tubing. I don't recommend starting with glass or copper or something that's very difficult to uh, to maneuver around and work with and bend. Uh, this stuff is pretty forgiving. PETG is famous for a reason it's popular among custom uh, builders. Acrylic is also a good alternative. It's just a bit more fragile, a bit easier to bend, mind you. Uh, but I personally prefer PETG just because it's more forgiving. And you'll see that when we start heating the thing up and bending it. The second thing you're going to need is some sort of silicon insert. Uh, this has to be the same OD as the ID of your tubing. Obviously you want to fill up as much of that space inside as possible so that when you bend it the tube doesn't collapse on itself uh, when it's hot. You're also going to need some hand soap. This is my sister's, don't worry it's not mine. Uh, just something to lube up the outside of the insert so that it slides easily into the tubing. Uh, and then you'll want some cutters. I recommend these right here. These are just copper cutters believe it or not. Uh, but these work excellent with PETG if you know how to use them correctly which I'll show you in this video. Also, I recommend at least for beginners something like this to kind of get you going. So this will uh, basically allow for a smooth cut all the way around the tube and you'll see how you do You just slide it in, you clamp it down, and you just rotate it a few times, keep tightening it until the tube either cuts or uh, you have a you know deep enough insert where you can just cut the rest of it with this right here. Uh, there are a few different ways to do that. I recommend using both in the beginning, then you can just stick with this or the other tool, vice versa. I don't know why these are here. Uh, yeah. Also an important piece to this puzzle, the heat gun. This is just a Wagner heat gun you can pick up at Home Depot or Lowe's. A bunch of uh, first timers and people even who have been doing this quite a while, uh, custom loop builders, use a heat gun like this. I recommend keeping it on middle heat, uh, on low heat, whatever you want to call it. Don't turn it up full blast because you'll have to hold the thing super far away lest you uh, get bubbles showing up on the tubing itself. Again, PETG a bit more forgiving. It's very easy to, to form bubbles on acrylic, but if you've been doing this a while, you know, you know roughly how far you should hold uh, your source away from the tube, you should be okay with either choice. Also, the OD and ID of the tubing is important. That will determine how far away you want to hold the tubing from the source of the heat. Uh, also, how long you need to hold it over the source before you can actually start bending the tubes. The thinner tubes, the ones with the smaller diameters, are easier to bend. It won't require as much heat for a longer period of time to get those to bend. The thicker tube, 16 millimeters, which I've worked with for the most part, this is 12 millimeter here, uh, but the 16 millimeter OD is a bit trickier. So I recommend starting with this with the smaller diameter uh, for your first time. So let's go ahead and bend our first tube. We're just gonna do a simple 90. That's a good start for anybody looking to get into custom cooling. We've already kind of like uh, soaked up the outside of the silicon insert. So it should just slide right in. And if you wanna help it as it's being inserted further and further into the tube, you can add more soap to it just to make that you know a smoother process. Uh, but you wanna get the silicon insert much further past the turn point in the acrylic, so or the PETG. So if I want a 90 about right here, then I want the silicon insert at least a few inches on either side of that point where I want to turn it just in case. Uh, because if you don't have that insert far over enough and you start bending and the, the tube partially melts over here where there is no insert, then that tube might collapse on itself and that's not what you want. That's not a smooth bend. All right, so we've got the silicon inserted and I've got the heat gun ready to go. So start off with low heat. Hold it about three to four inches away from the source. It depends on the power of the heat gun, the thickness of the tubing. For, for this particular uh, OD 12 millimeter and the power of this heat gun, about three inches away is, is my comfort zone. Again, if you're starting, this is your first time, hold it a bit further away. But I'm gonna show you the, the entire process, how long it takes for this to start melting so that you can expect you know, around the same time if you're using similar uh, tools and a similar tubing. You also wanna rotate the tubing so that all surfaces are at least somewhat heated. After about 20 to 30 seconds, I would say, you'll start to see the tube bend in a particular direction. That's when you know that you can start bending it very slowly. You can see it's already starting to bend. 
We don't want to force it though. If we force it, then you end up with really ugly turns. Uh, and that's what I've noticed a lot of people do when they get impatient. They start to see it bend like this. And they're like, oh good, I can bend it a full 90 now. But then it looks terrible because you'll get a kink here on the inside because it's not completely melted. And the outside will stretch out to the point where it almost snaps. It's getting a little more flexible. Now you want to heat the underside, the, the, the longer turn of the bend, more than the inside of that turn because the outside needs to stretch a bit further. So you want to focus your heat primarily on the outside of that turn. See, we're already starting to get pretty close to a 90 degree. No bubbles, no kinks, nothing like that. Just give it heat where it feels like it needs heat. If you feel resistance, give heat to that part of the tube. That's kind of the point of this whole thing. You can kind of work it. And so we pretty much got our 90 already. At this point, you can go ahead and remove it from the heat. I recommend holding it here, making sure that you've turned it properly. Close enough to a 90. You can use a tool to make sure that it's a perfect 90. I just eyeball it. If it's too much or too little of a turn, then I'll just reheat it and fix it. Okay. So that looks pretty good for our first 90 degree bend. Now, something else to note, if you have soap or water, whatever, inside the tubing while you're heating it up, don't worry about that warping your tubing much at all. That soap's just gonna wanna move out of the way. If it gets really hot, it's just gonna be forced elsewhere in the bend. So it won't, for the most part, uh, disturb any of your bends, make anything look weird. This is a pretty smooth bend here. I am satisfied with that. Now, once it's solidified enough and cooled down, you can go ahead and slide the insert back out. And there you go. It's easier to see the imperfections in the tubing when you have the silicone out because the light will bend around certain creases and areas in the pipe where it's not uh, smooth. You'll see that a lot easier. Uh, so at this point I can see there are a few tiny little imperfections here. This part's a little flat. Uh, there is a little ridge here at the end of this turn. There's also a ridge at the end of this turn. Very difficult to see, but you st you'll still notice it. If you're a perfectionist like I am, you'll want to fix that. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. Most people would say it's okay. I mean, it looks good from a distance. If you get really close, you can tell there are tiny little uh, imperfections there. So we're going to put soap back on the silicon insert, and we're going to slide it back in. It's, it's As long as you make sure that it's soaped up, you know, got water on it, whatever, it's going to be fairly easy to push this back in through the turn. So don't worry about, you know, after I turn it, I can't put the silicon back in and rebend it. It shouldn't be a problem. Now, to get rid of the tiny creases that show up at the ends of your turns, all you have to do is partially heat up the ends. You don't have to twist anything, you don't have to turn. It might try to bend when you heat it back up. It's, I mean, that's what it's gonna do when it melts. Uh, but if you give it just enough heat, you'll allow that PETG to partially melt, at least on the outside, and that'll smooth out those edges and give you a much smoother turn overall, especially if it's just a tiny thing that you wanna fix. Usually just heating it up partially uh, will do the trick and will smooth out those ends, give you a nice clean finish. So this looks like a solid bend here. I would be comfortable putting this in a build like this, no problem at all. Now what I want to show you is what happens if you heat it up too quickly or you hold it too close to the source. Also what happens if you try to bend it before the tubing is hot enough so that if this happens to you, especially in your first couple tries, uh, you'll know exactly what to correct the second time around. And I've run into these problems pretty much from the get-go when I first started. Also, certain tubing will be a bit more stubborn or a bit easier to bend. I found that thermal take and alpha cool uh, tubing are completely different in the way that they bend. Alpha cool tubing is pretty stubborn. It requires a bunch of heat, and if you hold it too close, it'll just start bubbling up. It's it's pretty tough to work with. Uh, thermal takes tubing is very easy to work with, I found, and so is primo chill tubing, uh, at least in terms of like PETG. I'm not sure about acrylic. Uh, but PETG stuff is, is good to work with. I recommend most beginners start with PETG anyway. So I'm going to simulate what happens if I hold this too close to the source. We're going to try to form some bubbles on here so that you see what that looks like. So I'm going to turn it on high heat. Don't recommend doing that, but I'm going to do high heat and I'm going to hold it pretty close, pretty close to the source. You can see it's already starting to bend. There's a lot of heat coming out of this. So if you're thinking to yourself, oh yeah, it's starting to bend, that's great. Oh, look at that. We've already got a big bubble here. That's not good. That's a bunch of heat. That's a bunch of just 
heated air trapped in the tube that's expanding right now because it's so hot. So that is not good. This whole run is toast now. You have to redo the entire bend. Uh, and that's what will happen with PET tube. You get larger bubbles when it gets too hot. Uh, if you have acrylic, more than likely what will happen with that is you'll get tiny little bubbles that show up everywhere. Uh, and that's just the nature of, of the way that it's uh, chemically made. Uh, it just reacts differently to high heat. So this is toast. See, there, there's no way I can get this back at all. It's completely wasted, go ahead and just trash it. Something else to note, the silicon can get extremely hot, but it likely won't melt. You'd have to hold it directly over the flame to see that thing start melting. So don't worry about how hot it is getting inside the tubing. It should be okay if it's uh, if it's manufactured properly. So the other thing I wanna simulate is what happens if you bend this tube without it being hot enough. So you've seen how hot it needs to be or how close it needs to be to high flame to, to start bubbling up. Now we're gonna try bending the tube if it's not hot enough, you'll see the kinks and uh, the imperfections in the turn. So when you start seeing the tube want to bend, you're not supposed to just do that. See what happened there? So you have a big kink on the inside and the outside is pretty darn stretched. So that'll impede your flow. It also looks terrible. This is not hot enough and it, the heat's not spread out enough on the tubing for uh, a nice bend. So for a good turn, you wanna have all sides, like I said, at least partially heated. You want the outside of the turn the most heated because it stretches the most. The inside, you don't have to worry too much about heating unless you feel it really being resistant to the turn. Uh, but the sides are almost just as important as heating the outside of the turn. If you don't heat the sides, you will get that kind of like warping, like stretching of the tubing on the sides of the turn. Now what you just saw is actually only half the battle. We have to cut the tubing, remember? So we have a good 90 here. This is the first one that we made, but we wanna cut it to, to spec. We wanna cut it to length so that it fits in our other components and our other fittings uh, well without you know extending too far out and warping the rest of our turns. So I recommend using at least something like this. This is a Thermaltake uh, cutter here. A lot of the Custom cooling companies will sell something like this. Premature also sells one. Uh, I'll have all these tools, by the way, linked in the description if you want to uh, do this yourself. So a tool like this is very simple to use. There's some rollers up top and you wanna just rest the tubing inside the roller like that. And then you wanna turn this, this is the, the, the cutter part. I think of like a pizza cutter, right? So you wanna just barely rest it against the PETG, like so, enough to where it, it's held in place. Now you wanna rotate the tubing and what'll happen is as you rotate it, that cutter will create a circle-like cut all the way around the PETG. And then after you've gotten a solid cut in there, then you wanna tighten it a bit more so that it cuts slightly deeper into that previous run. Now you could theoretically do this all the way until the pipe snaps. The thing is though, if you do that with the tool like this, then you're gonna to have to deburr the insides and likely the outsides because this cutter is gonna warp the inner diameter of the tubing, which could affect fluid flow, could affect uh, the, just the readiness of the tubing to fit inside of a fitting or uh, something else in your loop. So you could keep going. Again, you keep going until it cuts. Like I said though, I don't recommend doing that. If you want a clean cut, you don't wanna to have to use a tool like this, which is a deburr. still have one on hand. Uh, you can use it to uh, cut the inside down and the outside of the tubing down. Go ahead and remove this. Now use your pipe cutter. We wanna align the cutter itself up as close as you can to the groove. It should be deep enough. The, the original cut with this should be deep enough in the tubing to where you can just rest this cutter gently inside that groove. The lower you are, the easier it'll be to cut. Slowly slide through. There we go. Now, we'll get a close up on this tube here. If you've got a good clean cut, you shouldn't have to do anything else to it. Now, if you've gotten comfortable enough using both of these tools, you can just ditch this all together if you want. Uh, it just takes longer to use this and then this, or just use this by itself. You can just use the tube cutter. You can kind of create a ring with the pipe and the cutter itself, kind of like what you did with this. You're just using the pipe cutter itself to do that. When you've got a solid enough ring, again, start low on the cutter. There you go. And if you cut it well, you should have clean cuts on either side. One thing you don't want to do though, is just cut it super fast. Thinner tubing, it's, it's okay sometimes to do that. I wouldn't trust it though, because what you might end up doing is like squeezing the tubing. You might end up warping it uh, and just kind of narrowing it on one side and making it wider on another. That won't fit into any fitting that I know of that's compatible with 12 millimeter tubing. Uh, so just be careful, cut it slower. It's better to cut it slower because you can be more precise and you know exactly what you're doing to the tube. Uh, so if you start bending it in a way that you don't want to bend it while it's being cut, you know to just back off and maybe come at it from a different angle. So that's my tutorial for how to bend and cut PETG tubing. Acrylic will behave similarly. I keep saying that I'm not using it though in this tutorial because 
If you're watching this video, if you have to watch it to figure out how to bend and cut tubing, I recommend starting with PETG. I think it's a good starting point. It's very forgiving. Even if you bend it the wrong way, you can usually reheat that bend uh, and then kind of adjust it as you see fit. Uh, so it's forgiving and it's not going to frustrate you as much as acrylic will, I don't think, in the first uh, couple tries, especially if you're trying to figure out how far away from the uh, heat source to hold the tubing. With that, if you have any questions or comments you'd like to make, be sure to leave those in the comment section below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for uh, part two of Walter White 3's build log. Also, I apologize for the semi okayish audio. The microphone's back here. I don't have one up front yet. I'm going to work on that. I'll get one here soon. This is Science Studio. Thanks for bending with us.